Hi everyone, my name is Alexi and today I'm gonna show you how I build my own 50 pound power hammer. So this video is the first of a three-part series where I'm going to show you how I build this machine. In the part one, we are going to cover everything from the structure, the main shaft and the DuPont linkage. If you want to follow along and build one for yourself, we do have the plans available in the description below. On that, let's get started. So the first step with this project is to actually make room for the hammer itself. After that, I'm laying out the dimension on the floor just to see the footprint of the machine in the shop. So these are six by sixes of M-Lock. I chose them because they were cheap and there is a local sawmill that makes them but you could use pretty much any lumber that you have. These are real 6x6 because if you stack 5 of them you'll get a 30 inch wide base and it's a 30 inch by 30 inch so I just need to cut these in a length of 30 inches to get my base. So the next step with the base is to actually make a little recess on the front lug in order to, if I have to move the power hammer, I can slide a crowbar underneath there or a toe jack in order to easily lift it. So now that the lugs are cut to length, I got some all treads, some bolt and nut, and an extra long drill bit. We're gonna drill all the way through the lugs, put the all tread, and tighten that up. Now that the wood base is finished, we can go on with the steel base and the structure. The steel base is made out of half inch thick uh, plate, 30 inch by 30 inch. And the structure is made out of 2 by 2s and made of an inch thick. Pretty easy to find and not that much expensive. For the project, I'm cutting my metal tubing with a metal miter saw, but if you only have an angle grinder, it should work just fine. The only important thing here is to make sure that all your cuts are as straight as possible. Here, I'm only making tack welds to make sure everything fits perfectly well together before making complete welds.
For the base plate, I'm using a half inch, but if you can find a thicker one, it will be even better. Here, I'm drilling four holes to bolt down the hammer in the concrete. Now that the main frame is finished, we can go on with the ram guide. This part is made out of 5x5 five five square inch to quarter inch thick. Drilling holes in the inside corners is always a good idea before cutting. Here I'm drilling and tapping holes for the ram guide adjustment bolts. So the next step with the ram guide is to make a part that will hold the UHMW bearing material. For that, I'm going to use an 8 inch thick steel sheet. We often don't think about it, but using a jigsaw with a metal blade is really great for cutting thin sheets of metal. When welding the ram guide, it's super important to make sure that it is welded straight and parallel to the structure. Now that the structure of the ram guide is finished, we can go on and make the bearing surface. For that, I'll use UHMW. UHMW is a really great material for this application because it's really slippery and it has great wear resistance.
The next step is to make the DuPont linkage toggle links. Now that everything is ready, it's time to put the bushings in the DuPont linkage. To understand the next step, you need to know that these holes that I drilled are perfect 3 quarters of an inch. Usually I would use a reamer to make sure they are perfect perfect, but I don't, want, I don't own one and they are really expensive, so I made sure that they were as close as possible. These bushings are 3 quarters and 3 thousandths of an inch, so they are really close to fit in, but they don't. So I'll heat up this piece and put them in the freezer or outside it's currently like minus 13 and they should fit properly together. Now that all the bushings are fitted in I'll make sure to grind the excess just to make sure that all the joints are a bit smoother. To make sure that the nut will fit between the two sides of the toggle arm, you'll need to grind it. This nut is used to hold the screw that will tension the spring in the toggle link assembly.
To transform the rotation of the motor in translation, we need to make an offset cam. Here, I'm welding the main shaft to the offset cam. So this is it for part 1. If you want to see the next video, you can click over here. The plans are available in the description below. As always, we really hope you enjoyed, and if you did, leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing. See you in the next one, à la prochaine!